It is a great honor for us here on the studio on Studio 62 to have John Wesley Ship in studio with us, the original Flash. And um, I've even heard someone say, "Hey, it's the dad from Dawson's Creek." <laughs> yes, yes, I've played many dads. Some I played a real psychotic dad on Teen Wolf. Yeah, but I can't even watch that one. Do you and, still get the that, Dawson's Creek thing, though, that people come up to you? I do. <laughs> What's even stranger than that is I still get the soap opera stuff from, like, 1980s. Some lady on my Facebook wall said that. She's like, wasn't he in As the World Turns? My mom, you know, when people <laughs> do that, they'll call me Kelly Nelson or Doug Cummings. My mom says, I wouldn't recognize you from then. How do these people... How yeah, do these people know who you are from way back. Such then? a big part of of your history as an actor of doing that that um that TV that soap opera stuff and of course the original Flash back in the early '90s. Right. Um, I wanted to know. Of course, we have this uh, the Flash here on the CW62, but yes. everyone wants to know that phone call when they call you and they say, "Hey, you know, John, we want you to uh, to be in the new Flash. We want you to be the dad in that series." How how did that go down? Well, you know, I'd heard, you know, it fell in and out of development so mm -hmm. many times, a new flash. And certainly 24 years after we had done our effort, it mm -hmm. was time. And I heard that they were going to be doing it on the CW. And uh, I thought they may go one of two ways. Mm -hmm. They may decide to make a complete break and have theirs be completely new, which I would totally understand. Right. And then I heard Jeff John's reimagining of the Allen family, that in mm -hmm. the new version, Barry's father is wrongfully imprisoned, wrongfully convicted mm -hmm. of killing Barry's mother in front of a 10-year-old Barry. And I said to a friend of mine, if they come to me, that's the role I want because that's layered. There's a, that's a standalone character. It's not, many people were saying, Jay Garrick, Jay Garrick. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a certain a limit to, hey, this is how it's done, son. Right. You, know, you run really fast. <laughs> it, you know? But this, uh, the, 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 the conflict and the, and the poignancy and the pathos in there's the father-son relationship. There's so many layers to, to that, 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 rela that relationship. Um, is there anything that you can tell us about, I know um, there's a lot that you can't say, about the development of the, of the storyline. Obviously, there was a big, um, a big series premiere. Um, but is there anything you can tell us th to look forward to in um, The Flash? Well, I'm looking forward to uh, the return of Mark Hamill. Yes. Which he'll be on uh, on the 31st, mm -hmm. the trickster. Of course, we teamed <laughs> up in the 1990-91 version as the trickster, and uh, it was good to be with Mark and his his family and to and to have more fun and games. I read an article an that's going to air on about the that that you guys had a, a, a car ride back together and you were talking to each other. How how did you hear about that? I read the article. Jamarcus, you're amazing. Uh, wow, I mean, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> he said he was in the car. Yeah. <laughs> you're everywhere. No, it was great. You know, we, after we shot one day, Mark and I were in the car riding back, and he said, you know, rarely do you get a chance to revisit a project 24 mm -hmm. years later and sort of hand it off. That was our, that's our job. Yeah. He said, this is the second time this summer I've got to do this, of course, mm -hmm. Star Wars. Right. He said, but it's really great. Of course, our job is to be there to hand it off to mm -hmm. the next generation. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a role that I relish also because I'm a huge fan of Grant Gustin. Mm -hmm. We're both from Norfolk, Virginia. I, I read that. And, and also you guys have uh, your birthdays are kind of close birthdays together. Are, yeah, he was born on the 14th and I was born on the 22nd of January. And also not to make you feel aged at he any bit. He was born, say it. He was born the, <laughs> he year, was born the year that you were that playing I was the, Flash. Doing the Flash. So he said he used that to psych himself up during the yeah. whole audition process. But he is a, he's a phenomenon. He's a phenomenal actor. Yeah. He can do comedy. He can break your heart. Mm -hmm. He can play the brilliant scientist. And he can move from one to the other with, with, with ease. It's, it's really remarkable to watch. Everybody probably wants to be a fly on the wall between uh, you, with you and Grant speaking. What are those conversations like? And do you, did you ever give him any advice no, about God playing no. that role? Because they're you know, obviously two different people, two different um, setups there. But what are the conversations like between you guys? The conversations mostly are between colleagues. You know, they asked me the same thing on Dawson's Creek. I was the <coughs> senior <laughs> member going into Dawson's Creek, and they said, do you ever give advice? I said, oh, God, I hope not. And I hope <laughs> if I ever do that somebody just, you know, pops me, or, you know. But, uh, you know, Grant, uh, uh, the only thing that I have ventured to say, because I know how difficult it is mm -hmm. to work in a suit and how you have to conserve your energy over a 23-episode season, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I would I would encourage him. He'd be leaning up against the wall with the sweat running down. His face. I'd say, man, they have a cooling tent for you. Go to, <laughs> go to your cooling tent. You got it, you know. Or they'd say, uh, oh, Grant could do this shot, or Grant could do that shot. And I say, you know, mm -hmm. anytime you can use a double, you do probably, it. You probably you probably should. <laughs> yeah. You know, but he 
he's phenomenal. As an actor, he needs no help from right. me. I remember when I was told I would play his father, I tuned into Arrow and I saw him describing mm -hmm. to Oliver why he was really there and what had happened to his father. And, and you couldn't see the acting. You know, there's a whole acting book, No Acting, Please. Right. And it was, it was seamless and it was sincere and it was real. And I thought, yeah, I can work with this guy. And it's really helped those moments when he comes to the prison, you know, and either I'm defeated or he's defeated. And my, hats are, my, <laughs> my hat is off to the writers, how many different ways they can write that mm -hmm. father-son scene. I think, well, that's it. And then they surprise me again. So it's, you a, know? it's a pleasure to, to read it and figure out how they're going to do certain things. It's great. Yeah. It, it, it really is wonderful. And the uh, also good thing about it for continuity is that Andrew Kreisberg and Greg Berlanti and David Nutter mm -hmm. and Jeff Johns were all fans of the original effort. Mm -hmm. And they watched us very closely. Kreisberg was an assistant on the back lot at mm -hmm. Warner Brothers we met then. And, and they learned, I think, from the mistakes that we made and, and, and from our good choices. And as far as I can tell, the CW, Warner Brothers, they're doing everything right. It's, I, doing it's so exciting well. to be a part of it. Were you ever reluctant, uh, you know, taking it on again? Or was there ever, ever a moment where you're like, you know, what if this doesn't work, you know? Because um, there's probably a little bit of redemption in it that like, hey, you know, this one is extremely successful. Um, was there ever any reluctancy with taking on the role? Well, I knew that it was coming into, it was a similar show coming into a different culture. 24 mm -hmm. years ago, comic books had not exploded and gone mainstream. Mm -hmm. Now, when we, we all went to Comic-Con in San Diego and 180,000 people took over San Diego and we premiered our pilot in front of 7,000 people in Hall H. You know, and I was standing there with Jesse Martin. He was like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> he said, we haven't even aired an episode yet, and we're getting all of this love. Well, that wasn't true in 1990. Right. San Diego Comic-Con in 1990, I went through in two hours, signed five autographs, and that was it. It was, then. It was complete madness this year, Yeah. Uh, this past year. So the audience was is ready for it. Comic mm -hmm. books obviously have gone mainstream. And, and there is a certain amount of healing that takes place when you feel like you've worked so hard on something and it almost went, mm -hmm. you know. And my greatest hope for Grant was that he would have not only the critical success that we had, but the commercial success mm -hmm. that we just missed, and by God, he's having it. And, and so it's all about the here. people being able to support it and wanting to support it and really excited about the project, yeah. which, which um, leads us to uh, what you're here for this weekend here at the South Carolina Comic-Con. Yes. How, how cool is it for you to be able to come to uh, a fan-based convention that people are wanting to see you, they're wanting to talk to you, they're wanting to ask you questions, how cool is it for you to be able to do it's that? It's amazing. And, you know, of course, since the new Flash, I've gotten a lot of invitations. I almost feel like I'm on a tour, <laughs> you know, getting to meet people who are active fans, not only of the show, but that predate the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Flash has just had its 75th anniversary on March 19th. Right. I expect this weekend to be very exciting. <laughs> I get to talk to people who know more about the Flash than I do. <laughs> And we get to exchange yeah. ideas. I, you know, it's like I'm the son of a preacher man, literally. <laughs> so the whole pressing flesh and talking to people and the interaction, particularly when they're so enth enthusiastic about what you're doing. Super fans. Is Super really, fans. really awesome. You know, and when, you know, when people like Rob Young come and they put together a convention mm -hmm. where, you know, our, we were talking in the car on the way over, our, our society is so divided in many ways and polarized. Mm -hmm. But you know what? At a comic book convention, we all come together mm -hmm. And we're all there for one thing, to have a good time and to get to know each other. And it's, it, it's a coming together of society, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting to me on that level as well. Uh, someone upstairs was asking me, they're like, I wonder what is the craziest thing that has ever happened to him at a, at a Comic-Con or whether it's in San Diego or some other, what is the craziest thing that the, these fans can get a little less say involved? <laughs> you well, know, I had heard so many stories. My experience with the fans is that they are generous, mm -hmm. they are kind, you know, they're so enthusiastic. Someone that has been moved on some level mm -hmm. by what I do, who wants to come in to meet me, and the affirmation that you get. Uh, the woman, the pregnant woman who wanted me to sign her stomach, <laughs> that was a little... Uh, that, 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 that was a little guy. Yeah, I didn't feel comfortable He's like, doing how that. do I, how do I do this? How <laughs> does this work? I feel comfortable doing that. But, <laughs> but I said, that, that kid will be scarred for life. <laughs> um, so this weekend, for someone who has never been to a Comic-Con, we're going to run this in promotion of the uh, South Carolina Comic-Con. For someone who's never been to one of these, 
um, what would you say to get them off of the couch and to the TD Convention Center to experience this? Maybe they're like, I'm not even interested in any, any of this stuff. Believe me, you kind of are. Yeah, <laughs> you, you are, and if you're not before you go, you are once you're there. Mm -hmm. Because there's a show and then there's a show within the show. There's us who come in, uh, you know, me and uh, 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 over 170 comic book artists mm -hmm. and guests. And, uh, but then there's the show within the show. Uh, I've gotten tweets from fathers saying, this is the first time that I'm gonna cosplay with my son. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna come there. And I said, you better come say hi because I wanna be a part of that yeah. experience. You know, uh, a very, comic book has a very old tradition. You know, the fathers are quite often are fans of uh, Flash 1990 and the uh -huh. sons are explaining to their fathers, like, no dad, John Wesley Shipp, you see, he's Henry <laughs> Allen and he plays the Flash's <laughs> dad. So that's, uh, that's all going on. That's awesome. Um, uh, if you could have any superpower in real life, what would it be and why? <laughs> Other than being like super fast. Oh God, you're gonna make me get serious here. <laughs> any superpower, it doesn't have to be serious, it can be silly. Any superpower I in the world. I have to tell you, it would be the superpower in our country right now to allow us to talk to each other. Right. And to disagree and for it all to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody has to leave the room. Nobody has to leave mm -hmm. the building. We're all members of the same human family and citizens of this great country. That is the superpower I would like to have. I, I think we would all love for you to possess that or any, anyone really to possess that yeah. that is in a leadership role. Um, we thank you so much for being here with us. We, we love having you in the upstate. Have you been to the upstate before, upstate South Carolina? Oh yeah, listen, also. my family lives in Atlanta now. I'm a Virginia okay. boy, as I said. You know, yeah. I'm always driving. I usually drive through Greenville, but uh, oh. my voice teacher is from here. The, hello to the Bishop family. <laughs> uh, May and Bishop is from Greenville and his whole family, so I hope to meet some bishops. So now, here. so now you can stop by, you, you know where the studio is, we'll give you a key and you can come back at any time. Thank you, Jamarcus, I Thank appreciate that. Thank you so much that. for being here with us. And the other thing I forgot to ask is, um, the physical structure, you're obviously in great shape and you're in great shape then. Um, the, the Flash, Grant's character is very thin. Yeah. W what was your reaction to, T? I I mean, he, he obviously plays the role really well, but, um, was there just a different interpretation of the way the Flash looks? Listen, at the, at the beginning in 1990 when I saw, because our suit went through different versions, mm -hmm. and I saw the, all the musculature. Of course, we were in the post-Mark McGuire, post-Jose Consenco, pumping iron hangover. Right. You know, so everything had to be bigger than life. And mm -hmm. certainly the construction of that suit, $100,000 to build four suits in 1990 you know, was remarkable achievement. I take nothing <laughs> from that. But I was always saying the guy's thing is speed. Mm -hmm. It should be aerodynamic. I also like what Colleen uh, uh, Atwood, Oscar winning designer of the new suit, mm -hmm. uh, has, has given it an urban, uh, more of an urban mm -hmm. look. And, you know, Grant is 10 years younger than I was. <laughs> so he has this kind of very young, youthful, enthusiastic mm -hmm. face, which is right for Barry. Uh -huh. But the, the urban quality of the new suit gives him that edge that the flash needs. You know, so I like it. I, 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 I like it. It's more aerodynamic. It's more streamlined. I find myself defending the, the new suit. suit. Yeah. Not anymore. Not yeah. anymore. Because at the beginning, people were like, oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. I spent a lot of time defending and telling mm -hmm. people to keep an open mind. Because and they said, well, you're the only reason I'm <laughs> going to watch. I said, well, that's fine. If yeah. I'm the only one reason you watch the first episode, I won't be the only reason you watch the second and the third and the fifth and the twelfth and right. the twenty-third. And that's the way it's happened. I love that about you. Very, uh, very honorable. You could, you could have a totally different approach to a lot of those things and um, upstanding. Oh. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank, thank you so you. much for being here with us. Thank you, sir. And uh, have a great time at Comic Con. I will. I intend to. Thanks. Awesome. Anyone else have any questions that I failed to mention that's po quite possible that would be good to be asked? Anyone? Any questions that were blaringly missed? All right, great. We just chatted. Let's get yeah. a picture. Since everybody else got pictures, I haven't got a picture. Yes.